Hello and welcome to 6502 Assembly Language Programming. Uh, today we're going to talk about the addressing modes of the 6502. Um, this is something I probably should have covered back after about around uh, lesson four maybe um, after I covered the op codes but um, I've kind of been talking about them as we use them in projects but uh, the question about them came up on a forum, an assembly language forum today, and um, someone was saying this, that they seemed awfully complicated, and I thought, well, I should have a video that I can just point to to say they're they're really not that complicated. So I'm going to run through them here. Um, the addressing modes just means the different ways that instructions can access memory, basically what it boils down to, the different, the different ways that instructions can be used. Um, for instance, let's see. Uh, in our worm game, um, I'll just stick a couple in here. If you say load A from, say, an address 2000, that's a different process than, say, load A with a number 3. Okay, that it does it has to do two different things and then if you say load a from a zero page location that's another thing that works a little differently um, and actually let me switch to the monitor here actually that'll, that'll show it better if I start assembling at 1300 and I put in let's say load a 2000 from from memory location 2000 and then load a with the with the value three, and then load a from zero page. Um, let's say F A. If we disassemble that, you'll see if you look at the first byte that I, that represents the instruction, it's different each time. You get A D when you're loading a from a from an absolute address. You get A9 when you're loading with a value, and you get A5 when you're loading from a zero page location. If I add a couple more, let's say we load from 2000 comma X, or let's say we load from 2000 comma Y. Um, let's say we load from indirect FA comma Y, and then disassemble all that again they're different load a 2000 comma X is BD load a 2000 comma Y is B9 and load a from indirect FA comma Y is B1 so the point is the processor has to do different things depending on how you're using load a and that's what we're talking about when we talk about addressing modes each one of those represents a different mode um, and so what I have written here then is a list of the modes and when you start reading about them they seem it, it seems like there's more of them than there really are because some of these aren't really addressing modes or at least they don't actually use addresses and so you don't have to um, I guess I'd say some of them just kind of happen more naturally than others um, and so if you think of this let's see there's what 11 here you don't really have to think about 11 different addressing modes. There are really only a few and then they're used in different ways and so we'll, we'll go through them here and you see what I you see what I mean by that. So the first one is implied or sometimes it's called implicit and this is not there, there's no addressing involved because in this case the operation doesn't need an address. It's it doesn't go out to memory and do anything. It just operates on a register in the CPU or it's pushing something off the stack that that would be an implied operation but basically you know, th th there is no addressing in this case and so some examples of that would be like RTS return from subroutine INX increment X that just increments the value in the X register doesn't touch memory um, clear the carry flag that doesn't touch memory so when we say you know when we say an operation is it uses implied addressing modes we just mean it doesn't really do any addressing it doesn't go out to memory at all um, one thing I wanted to show before I got started and then I forgot um, let's see what page was that on 
yeah there it is this is a schematic of the 6502 now this is not actually how it it's laid out I mean this is just a, a drawing of the the, the, the concepts a, a schematic or flow chart of it I guess you'd say um, <clears throat> And the reason I wanted to show this was um, one of the questions that was asked was people say the 6502 is an 8-bit processor and the Commodore 64 and 128 and so on were 8-bit machines and so how can that how can you address up to 64k of RAM if you only have 8 bits to work with because 8 bits 8 bits only gives you up from 0 to 255 so how can you go up to 65,535 and the reason is it's it's an 8-bit processor in the sense that the registers are each 8 bits and it can only move 8 bits of data around at a time but if you look at the address side of things the address buffer which is over here it's 16 bits it actually has two 8-bit um, buses that are hooked together or, or side by side and so you actually get 16 lines going out on the address buffer and so it can it can address 16 bits of memory which adds up to 64k on the other side of and so that's the address bus that all this business over here on the left over here on the right right well right here in the middle you have your registers you got your y and x your stack pointer the alu is where all the math happens um the arithmetic arithmetic or arithmetic logic unit i think is what that stands for you got the accumulator, the low and high byte of the program counter, and then some some other goodness around here. Um, but basically, those those are your registers, and you'll see like the Y register is not connected to the address buffer; it's only connected to the data bus. So on the right here, you have the data bus, and it's also and it's shown coming down here and then around here. It only has eight lines, and so the data you move is only 8 bits and that's why we call it an 8 bit an 8 bit processor and that's why you're always working the the math and stuff that you're doing is always 8 bits because all these things the the ALU where you do the math and the accumulator and the x and y registers and everything they're all 8 bits and you can only push 8 bits up and down the data bus at a time but the addresses you push them to you have 16 bits to work with and so where you push them can get up to 16 bits um, up to 64k and the same thing with the instruction register the instruction register only has eight bits and so each instruction is only a single byte and we don't and that's why we don't we only have you know less than 255 possible opcodes possible instructions so i just wanted to show that a little bit to explain the difference between you know, why it's 8-bit and 16-bit at the same time. 8-bit data, 16-bit addressing. All right, back to where we're at here. So implied addressing just means there is no address. Accumulator addressing, that's basically the same thing as implied, except in this case, you're acting on the accumulator, and for whatever reason, in the books, they treat that as a separate type of thing. Again, there's no address involved you're just acting on the the accumulator register um, where with implied you're you're acting on some other register or or, or the uh, status register or something else but with accumulator addressing you're acting on the accumulator alone and so some examples of that would be like arithmetic shift left where you shift all the bits in the accumulator one spot left and pull in a zero, a zero on the right you have um, rotate right that rotates the accumulator all the bits to the right pulls in the carry flag rotates through the carry flag um, one reason they they call this a separate addressing mode might be that some some um, assemblers have you write this one with a as as an argument um, the the Commodore 128 monitor doesn't do that you just write ROR um, the Acme assembler that I'm using doesn't do that. You just write ROR. But I have seen that in some of them, so that may be why they do that. Because in those in those assemblers, you would write ASLA, ROR-A, just to show that you're acting on the accumulator and not on something out in, in memory. Because those instructions can act on... That's the thing. A lot of instructions can be used in more than one addressing mode, just like I showed before over here in the monitor. 
that load A can be used in several different addressing modes, but we'll just give, get an examples of each one. All right, so that's the accumulator mode, which again, doesn't really do any addressing, it just works on the accumulator. All right, immediate. So now, again, this isn't really addressing. Um, in this case, the argument that you give to the opcode is just a value that is gonna be done something with. Um, again, there's no, you're not going out to memory and doing anything. So there's no memory address involved here. Um, so for example, and in, in, in every um, monitor or assembler I've seen, you show that by putting a pound sign at the beginning here or a hash mark, whatever you want to call it, um, in front of it to say this is an immediate um, number. And what they mean by immediate is it, it doesn't have to go anywhere to get this number. It doesn't have to go get it out of memory. It's just there immediately. It's the value that you're going to work with. So this load A pound one means load the accumulator with the value one. So when you do that, um, if we go back over here, uh, let's just, um, let's put this at 1310, load A with one. If we go to 1310, I thought it would break out. weird uh, huh I wonder why it didn't break I, I guess it did but it just works a little differently than the monitor um, let's see if I go to the monitor I'd have to break out of that first yeah there it shows the break okay it's just showing it in the in the built-in monitor so you can see then the accumulator AC here has one in it because it actually loaded the value of one. It, d it didn't use one as an address, it just you called it the value. So again, I don't think of this as an addressing mode, but that's what we call it just because everything has to be called something. Um, so immediate, here's another example. CMP means compare the accumulator to this value. And so we're gonna compare the value that's in the accumulator with the value FA and it's just going to use that value again there's no going out to memory to get anything so that's how immediate works again it's there's no real addressing going on in terms of memory addresses so now we come to absolute now we finally have an actual memory address that's involved in this case the argument is a 16-bit address somewhere in the 64k of memory that you have to work with and these are pretty straightforward when you say load A from 40FA, that just means load the accumulator with the value that's at memory location 40FA. If you say JSR to 2001, it just means jump to a subroutine that's at memory location 2001. Um, not much to say about this. It's called absolute, I guess, just because it just means whatever the number is, that's the number, that's the address. You're not doing anything weird. You know, you're not indexing it. It's not indirect. It's none of the other weird things that are going to come along later. It's just an absolute number that is the address. Okay. Brings us to zero page. Now, zero page, again, is is absolute. Um, you're not doing anything weird to the number. The number is just the number. But in this case, it's just a single byte, and it's a location in zero page memory. Um, if we talk a little bit about the, um, okay. If we talk a little bit about the way memory is laid out, you have when you have 64k of memory, you go from 0000 to FFFF. Well, if you think of that. You know, that's 65,536 bytes of memory. But if you think of it as 256 pages, your first page is 0000 to 00FF. And then your second page is 0100 to 01FF. And your third page is 0200 to 02FF. And eventually you get down to uh, 
FF002 FFFF would be the last page in memory. So if you actually wrote them all out, you'd have 256 pages, and each one of these is 256 bytes, and so your total is 256 times 256. So we talk a lot about pages of memory, and you know it's it's this these this two this byte right here zero zero goes to here zero zero, and so we call this zero page. That's the zeroth the zeroth page in memory, the first 256 bytes. Um, and we also call this page one, you know, page two, and so on and so forth. But mostly, you know, this is the only page we, we call zero pages special um, because of all because of these because of this addressing mode. Um, and page one is where the stack is, and so it's a little bit special, but it's not as special as zero page. Um, so when you're addressing in zero page, you go from zero zero to FF. And so if I say, okay, the the address FA in zero page, well that's that's the if you think of it in absolute terms, that's zero zero FA. The zero zero represents the page and then the FA represents the location in that page. But zero page accesses are faster because that's just the way it's designed. Um, they take one less byte in the code, which I'll show in a second here, which I guess I'll show now. Um, let's go back here. Um, yeah, if you look at the first line, load, to, load A with 2000, that's AD0020. It takes three bytes to, to put that in your, in your code. The third line, load A, FA, that's a zero page access, and that only takes two bytes, A5, FA. Because since it knows it's the, the instruction, the A5 knows that it's zero page, so it doesn't need the top byte, it just needs the bottom byte to say where it is in zero page, which one of the 256 bytes it is. All right, there's one caveat to zero page. When I say it's the first byte or it's the first page in memory, it's not necessarily because you can move you can move zero page at least in the Commodore 128. I'm not so sure about the 64 if that's true with it or not, but at least in the 128 um, with the memory management unit, you can move zero page around um, if you want to put it somewhere else. You can swap it basically with some other page in memory, and so it it'll still it'll still act like zero page but you'll actually be moving the bytes somewhere else in memory wherever you moved it to rather than the ones that are physically in the first place now there aren't too many times you'd want to do that um, one what one reason would be if you wanted to try to run multiple programs if you want to try to write a multi-processing um, operating system or something like that you've got to be able to have multiple programs that each have their own zero page and stack and so you can move those things and swap them back and forth between different locations um, as you're as you're working or as you go back and forth from one program to the other one um, another thing would be at least in theory if you want to fill a page very quickly if you make it the zero page you can fill it faster and then switch the zero page back to where it was because while you're filling it, those accesses are going to be faster than if they were absolute addresses. I don't know how much of a difference that would really make. I haven't really tinkered with that. Maybe I, maybe I will sometime. But anyway, that's just a caveat that when I say it's the first page in memory, it's it, it's treated as if it's the first page in memory, even if you move it. So, for instance, load A from FA means load accumulator with the value that's in the zero page memory location FA which normally is going to be 00, zero FA so it's going to get the value from that memory location put it in the accumulator store X with 80 means store the value of the X register into zero page location 80 fairly straightforward I think all right, 
relative. A relative addressing is pretty unlike anything else. Um, relative addresses are, it, it is what it says, it's relative. Um, I guess the best way would be to just show an example because like I say here, this looks like absolute addressing but in, in the guts of the 6502 it's actually relative. So let's just do an example. Um, we'll put this at 1400 branch if not equal to 1405 and then disassemble that now that it's showing as far as the instruction goes it's just showing what I typed in branch if not equal to 1405 but if you look here at the actual codes you don't see the 1405 what this is showing is the D0 means branch if not equal. The 3 means 3 spots ahead from the next instruction. So what it does then, if it, if, it does want, if it does decide to branch, it gets the address of the very next instruction, which is 1402, adds 3 to it, gets 1405, and branches ahead to that. And that's why we call it relative addressing, because in the in the way the processor understands the codes, the address or what you know what you could call the argument or the address here is not a complete address. It's an it's a relative distance from the next instruction. If we put in another one, um, let's say branch if not equal. Let's start at fourteen o four or fourteen five branch if not equal back to 1400 <coughs> excuse me now this time again in the you know the assembler just shows what I typed but if you look at the codes this time it's showing F9 why such a big number we're only we're, this time we're going backwards we're going backwards from 1405 to 1400 or Actually, if you think of it as going backwards from the next instruction, we're going back seven spots. So why such a big number? Well, the reason is this is a negative. It, this is treated as a negative number. Anytime the, the high bit, if you're dealing with, with signed numbers that can be positive or negative, then the high bit is the, is the sign. And if it's set, it's negative. And if we look at then um, what is F9, in different things. Let's see, I guess I gotta get give it that. If you look at this in binary, you can see that the high bit right here is set. And that means it's negative. And I'm not gonna get into two's complement here, but the way negative numbers are shown in binary is weird. Um, but what this means is negative seven. Okay. Um, F9 or 249 in, if you make that a signed byte, if you treat the top bit as, as a sign, then it's in this case it's a minus sign and this thing becomes negative 7. And so that's the way it gets treated by the processor. When it sees this, it says, okay, that's a negative number, so it's negative 7. I've got to go back 7 from the next um, you know from the next instruction, go back 7 and that takes me to 1400. Okay. So that's what we mean when we say they're relative. That it's going to move relative to the next instruction based on whatever the argument is. Um, you know, fortunately your assembler or your monitor does the, does the figuring for you on that. You can just say go here and it figures out how much it needs to go relative from where it's at. Um, now one thing about that is it means it can only branch up to 127 bytes forward or 128 bit 128 bytes backwards because with the negative with the positive or negative values you've only you only have a range of 256 so or I guess 255 so divide those up you've got you can go forward 127 or backwards 128 if you need to go further than that you can't use one of these rel you can't use relative addressing so you can't use one of the branch instructions you just you'd have to switch and use um, a jump um, so for example like I said it 
these just look like absolute addressing and so you let the assembler take care of the the complicated stuff but branch if not equal to 21 e4 means if the zero flag is not set if it's not equal to zero jump to location 21 e4 bcs 138 f means if the carry flag is set jump to location 13 8 f these are basically you know these are the i think i mentioned we're going through the op codes these are kind of the most of the brains of a program that when you're making decisions in a program do this or do that it's that's mostly based on your your branch instructions along with compare and uh, a few other things all right these are getting more complicated as we go down by the way um indexed absolute um this is an absolute address into memory but the value of one of the index registers, either X or Y, gets added to it first to get the address into memory that you're going to use. So for instance, if you have load A 2000 comma X, you add X to 2000 and then go use that memory location. Do whatever you're going to do. In this case, you're going to load the accumulator with the value from that location. So if X equals 8, then you're going to load A with the value from memory location 2008. It's going to be the same thing as if you would just written load A 2008. Now, the reason this is valuable is because then you can change X. So if you're looping through, like when we've, in, in previous videos, we've wanted to fill, a, fill an area of memory, like fill an area of the screen with spaces, you can loop X through 0 to 255. And, you know, and then each time you hit this, this instruction it's it's going on to the next you know the next location because the value of x keeps changing and so you can do that with x or y and you can do that with a lot of different different instructions um, and just in, in the same thing here increment 133 e comma y if y would happen to be 2 you add that 2 to 133 e or the well you don't the processor does it adds 2 to 133e. The, the result of that would be 1340, and so it goes and increments the value at memory location 1340. And I've also seen that called absolute indexed. So I, sometimes the, the uh, terms vary just slightly from one book to another. All right, index zero page. This is just like the one we just looked at, the indexed absolute, but it's in zero page. Um, I'll come back to the caveat in a second. So for instance, load A from FA comma X, if X happens to be two, you add two to FA, which gives you FC. And so you're doing the equivalent, the processor will go and load A from FC, from the memory location that's in zero page FC. So that's just like, you know that's just like these up here except that the address is in zero page which is why there's only one byte only two digits and not four digits like these the caveat is that you can only use y as the index register here with store x and load x those are the only two operations that you can do with y as the zero page index register for whatever reason, I think I think one of the books explains why that is. But um, so basically, if you need if, if you're using Y, um, I don't really I, I I don't think I've used these very often because the thing about zero page is there aren't a lot of locations available there to mess with, um, especially if you're not especially if you're letting the the Commodore kernel do its thing. Um, or like if you're if you're using any basic or anything like that, those use zero page locations, and so you can't tamper with any of the locations they're using. There are only a few locations in zero page that you're guaranteed are never going to be touched by anything else, you know, anything in the system other than your own programs. So this I you know this idea of using an index and stepping through lots of locations in zero page probably isn't going to come up too often, but you know if it does, this is available but like here store x and 80 comma y if y would be 9 then it's going to store x in the zero page location 89 because it adds y to 80 
and get and then that's the address and zero page it's going to act on yeah. all right that brings us to the indirect ones now these are the these are the trickiest ones um, if you've never done any programming they'll they'll probably be tricky at first if you have done some and you've worked with things like pointers or references it probably won't be quite as tricky but um, either way I think I think a person can get it um, indirect and in each case indirect means we're going to get an address from a location and then we're going to use that address to decide where to go so there's like an extra step um, and that's why it's called indirect you know you're not using you're not getting or working on the location that shows in the command you're working on some other address that it points to in some way so the first one here is the simplest you go and you get the value from the address that's shown plus the next byte that's following it and you use them as the actual address to jump to now first of all the first thing to know is this mode can only be used with the jump instruction no other instructions use this particular addressing mode um, and the other note is that the two bytes of the address are in little ND in order which means the low byte comes first um, and that's that's the case for everything on the on these machines um, for the 6502 anytime you're dealing with an address in memory you the low byte always comes first so for example I think it's probably easier to show these with examples than it is to really try to explain them. We have jump to indirect 2000. Okay. What that's going to do then, what the 6502 does then, because of these parentheses around it, that's what makes it indirect. If you, if you took the parentheses away, it would just jump to location 2000 in memory and, and start running from there. But when you put parentheses around it, that's what makes it indirect. Um, and sometimes it's just called indirect, sometimes it's called absolute indirect or indirect absolute. I, you know, take your pick, I guess. What this does is, because it's indirect, it goes to 2000 and gets that value. And it also goes to the next byte, which in this case would be 2001, and gets that value. So let's say 2000 holds FA and 2001 holds 13. It takes those two values. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of this one takes those two values puts the second one first because the low byte comes first and then the high byte so basically flip them all the, you know always flip them and it turns that into jump to 13 fa so the 13 comes from the second byte which was at 2001 and the fa comes from the first byte which was at 2000 so our our you know, instruction here points to the first one, points to the first byte, which is going to be the low byte. The high byte is always the very next byte in memory. You don't have to point to it, it's just, it's automatically the next byte. All right, and then it jumps off to 13FA. So 2000 was just the place where the address was being held in 2000 and 2001. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, the caveat with this is you can't ever use this on a page boundary like this. If you say jump indirect to 20FF, what you would expect that to do, well, I guess you can use it, but it's not going to do what you would expect it to do, and it probably wouldn't, wouldn't be a good idea. Um, what you would expect that to do would be to get the low byte from there, 20FF, and then get the high byte from the next location in memory, which is going to be 2100 because 20FF is the last location in the 20 page and so the next location of memory is going to be the first location of the next page which is 2100 but there's a bug in the 6502 processor or I don't know, call it a bug or just a design choice or <laughs> what you would call it but when you do that it doesn't go up to the next page it just goes back to the beginning of the same page and so what happens is it'll get the it'll get the low byte from 20FF correctly but then it'll get the high byte from 2000 it'll it'll increment the FF and get 00 but it won't increment the page number and so you'll get the you'll get the ver you get the low byte from the last byte of of the page and then the high byte from the first byte of the page instead of the first byte of the next page 
and you're probably never going to actually want to do that. And so you would probably never really do that. It's it's not likely that you'd ever do that anyway because if you use this and it's I don't this isn't commonly used at all. Um, but if you do use this, you're probably going to set up a table of addresses somewhere, and your odd, odds are you're going to start that table at the beginning of a page or on some sort of even numbered boundary, and so you're not going to span the end of a page on it. You're not going to span a page boundary like that. You'd almost have to do that on purpose to get that wrong. But um, that's just something to watch for if you do that, if you use that much. All right, so that's absolute indirect brings us to indexed indirect. Now, first of all, a way to, we've got two of them here. This one's called indexed indirect. This one's called indirect index. And you think, good Lord, why'd they call them that? Well, it's actually correct. I mean, it actually makes sense once you understand what they do. But as far as remembering which one is which, it's helpful if you notice that indexed has an X in it. And index comes first here, and it's the one that uses X indirect indexed does not have an X in the first word and it, it's the one that uses Y so that's how I kind of remember what they're called um, the one that has indexed first is the one that uses the X register <clears throat> and this is very rarely used um, the only way you could ever use this or would have any reason to use this is if you had a table of pointers to memory in zero page and like I talked about before zero page locations are so um, so precious that you, you know you're just not likely to have a whole, a whole table of memory pointers in zero page you could um, but it's just I, th I think like maybe if you're writing a basic compiler maybe you would because each line could have a pointer you know off off you know or each line could have a pointer in zero page or something like that but um, it's just not something that comes up very often. You, you could do a lot of programming for a long time without ever needing to use this, but we're going to explain it anyway. So what this does, it, it looks like this, load A, and then in parentheses you have a zero page location, comma X, and it, it has to be X. Like I said, indexed uses the X, um, in, or indexed indirect uses the X, not indexed other things. So what it does, it takes that zero page value adds X to it that's the first thing it does and that's the, the the key here is the order these things happen you take the 80 you add the X to it and then you use that as the as the address where you're gonna get the low byte of an address and then you're gonna get the high byte from the next location and that's gonna give you an address in memory where you're gonna go do your operation okay. that probably sounds terribly confusing it did to me even while I was saying it so let's have an example load a from indirect 80 comma X and let's say X happens to be 4 and then let's say the location in 0 page 84 holds 20 and the location 85 holds 40 okay. well what this is going to do so we'll go step by step through it. First it adds x to the value that's in the instruction. So 80 plus x, which I said was 4, you get 84. So it goes and gets a low byte from 84, and we said that's holding 20. Then it goes and gets a high byte from the very next location in the zero page, which in this case would be 85, and we said that holds 40. Then you put those in order, low byte or high byte first, and you get an address which then is 4020 and then you go do the operation on that address and you get load A4020 is the, the operation they would actually do in this case um, okay so let's let's do an example or let's do that here first of all there's our zero page there's the 256 bytes currently in our zero page um, so let's start assembling at 1300 and let's load X with 4 and then let's load A from indirect um, 
90 comma x and return or in break I guess okay so let's disassemble that and just think about what this is going to do all right yeah what am I doing there okay so we're going to load x with 4 so our index register is going to be 4 then we're going to load a from 90 comma x now that 90, that 90 is hexadecimal I'm saying 90 it's really 90 in hexadecimal and then we're going to break out so we can see what a contains all right so let's um let's put a break on this so we can walk through it okay so we load x with 4 now x has 4 now we're going to load a from 90 comma x and then we're going to break now a has f8 so where did the F8 come from? All right, let's look again at our zero page. If we look at 90, I don't see, you know, starting at 90, I don't see any F8s. All right. Well, we got to go back and think about what this does. Load A 90 comma X adds the 4 to 90 and gets 94. So then it goes to 94 because it's indirect goes to 94 which this is 90 91 92 93 here's 94 and it gets that to be its low byte then it goes to the very next byte and gets that to be its high byte so now we have low byte equals 55 and high equals ff okay so that means to form our address we swap those around and we go into ff55 so what it ends up wanting to do then after it figures out the indirectness of it it goes ahead and loads a from ff55 wherever you know whatever that happens to be in memory so if we check that now there's the f8 there's the f8 that it got so that's how indirect x or call it indexed indirect works you add the value of x to the value in the instruction which has to be a zero page location and then go to that location in zero page the one that you get after you've added them together get your low byte for your address get your high byte from the very next one so we got our low byte from here at 94 we got our high byte from here at 95 put those together into an address high byte first which made ff55 and then that's the location in memory that you're going to act on all right so that is indexed indirect which like i said is very rarely used but it is available in case you want to and that brings us to the last one which is much more commonly used i've used it in a couple of the programs we've done so far in this series so this is indirect indexed and this one always uses the y register never works with the X so the X one is the one we just dealt with we rarely use this one you use quite a bit with Y the difference here you'll see the Y is outside the parentheses so the difference is the order in which it does the things okay, so with indexed indirect if I open that back up we added X to the address and then did the indirect business of figuring out what to do this time we do the indirect business first and then add the y because it's outside the parentheses so it actually makes sense you know makes kind of logical sense here or symbolic sense or whatever you want to call it to say well here the y is outside so first we're going to we're going to do the indirect stuff we're going to do the indirect activity on the thing in the parentheses and then we'll add our index so here in our example we've got load a indirect 80 comma y let's say again that y our, our index register equals 4 we'll say that the 80 and 0 page holds 20 and 81 and 0 page holds 40 so in this case the first thing it does is takes this 0 page location 80 and goes there and gets its gets a low byte for an address so it gets 20 in our example then it goes to the next location 
which would be 81, and gets a high bite. Now it puts those two together, high bite first to make an address, which is 4020. Then after it does that, it's, it's done all the indirect stuff and found an address at that location. Now it adds the value of y to that address. And since y is 4, we get 4024, and then it goes and does the operation on that address. Okay. Now this is used quite a bit more because now you just have the one, you, you don't, you're, you're probably not working on a table of locations in, in zero page. You just have one two byte address in zero page. And um, if I flip back to, I think we had this in the worm somewhere. Yeah, right here. This store, store A into head adra comma y, we can change head adra if we want to move around in memory. But we're still only using one location in zero page. We're still only using two bytes in zero page. We can change those two bytes if we want to move to another location in memory. But we don't have to have a bunch of different. We don't have to have a table of addresses and bytes like we or or in zero page like you would need to have to make the indexed indirect uh, method useful. So this method is a lot more useful because you only need the two bytes in zero page to make use of it. Um, so an example. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Um, Okay. Let's load y with 4. And then let's load a from Well, let's just do let's just use the same example we did last time and see what happens except now we've got a y to say we're doing the y um addressing which is indirect first and then indexed. So that's why I say that the the names of them make sense. This one's called indirect indexed because it does the indirectness first and then indexes that. The one with x does the indexing first, adds the index first, and then figures out the indirect address. So that's why I say the names make sense, but it does look confusing when you're first reading about them. And you're like, uh, what? OK. So if we look again at our zero page, at 90, 0, 0, and uh, 91 is going to be FF. So anyway, let's 1300. So we're going to run 1300. And it's going to break on our break. So we're going to load Y with 4. And uh, why is Y not getting? OK, I'm not sure what happened there. but. Um, OK, so y is now 4. Now it's going to load a from that indirect location. And a became 41. OK, so let's look at our 0 page again. Or let's just look at 90, um, 90 91. Or let's go from 90 to 9, 9f. All right, again, there's no 41 here because this is we're not actually getting the value from here. We're getting it indirectly from here. And so what happens is it comes here and says, OK, I need the low byte from 90, which is 0, 0. I need the high byte from the next, the next one, 91, which is FF. I'm going to put those together in an address, high byte first. And so I get FF 0, 0. That's my address. That's my, my indirect address that we just assembled. And we've still got the comma y to go along with that. And since y is 4, we need to add 4, and that's going to equal FF04. Okay. So it actually loaded a from FF04. So if we check out FF04, we should see the 41 that we got. And there it is. Okay. So that one, like I said, that one gets used quite a bit more because you can use it to work your way through memory. Um, doing stuff because you have that one pointer in zero page to memory and you can you know add or subtract to that pointer whatever you need to do to move it around and you don't need multiple ones you can just use that one all right um, 
I think that's everything, so I'll call it there. I'm almost an hour into this anyway. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, drop them in the comments or uh, email them to me. And uh, I will I'll push this document up to my uh, GitLab repository um, when I upload the video. And uh, so it will be available there if anyone's interested in it. Um, addressing.org will be the, the name of it. So those are the 6502 addressing modes. And I hope this is informative. And thanks for watching.